Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker and welcome back into my shop. Happy New Year. It's been a long time and I apologize for that delay. Wanted to bring you kind of an interesting treat. Um, I decided to break down and get one of the new version 3 Wood River planes from Woodcraft. I went over to my local Woodcraft store and played around with the number 4 and the number 5 and was pretty impressed with them. Um, I specifically was interested in a smaller plane and the number three that they have, which they didn't have one in the store at the time. So I went ahead and placed an order online and I just got it this evening. So nice little box that it comes in. And this is the plane. It's still covered in packing grease. So really what I wanted to do was truly put it to the test and see just how out of the box this plane really is. So I want to go ahead and take it all apart and basically separate all the parts. Blade and the chip breaker are really nicely mated together. The plane itself feels really sturdy and I, I like that. I'm going to remove the two adjustment screws in the back that secure the frog. And this is set up like some of the older Stanleys where there are three screws in the back. There's a screw that moves the frog forward and backwards and then there are two screws on either side of it that actually anchor the frog to the sole of, of the plane. It's a nice feature because it does allow you to adjust the the plane in and out. Whoa! And that's not good. I just dropped an oily adjuster piece onto the sawdust floor, but you know, what are you going to do? These are the uh, <clears throat> the capture nuts that actually sit down in the bed itself that the screws go into. And you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't, this is modeled after the Bedrock series of Stanley planes. There is a solid mating surface that this frog mates against. And again, solid on the bottom of the frog as well. Unlike some of the, the number threes, fours, et cetera, the ones through eights, where there's just a couple of surfaces. This is like the, the 601s through the 608, the Bedrock series. So that's certainly encouraging. Now what I want to do is just grab a little bit of solvent to remove the packing grease. I'll start on the sole. And you want to just wipe everything clean. Get all of that packing gunk out of there. And go ahead and actually remove the screws that attach the frog. Get down inside the plane, really clean up the, the bed here. I suppose I could actually remove the handle, the tote and the knob, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. Do your best to get down in there. Okay, set the sole aside. <clears throat> now I'll work on the frog itself. Just make sure you get all this stuff off because all it's going to do is collect sawdust and kind of gum up the works later. Everything is really solid here. Um, adjustment mechanisms, 
the lateral adjuster all looks really well put together. Um, really nicely machined. Okay, we'll set the frog aside. Just clean up these bolts that attach the frog to the sole and then the captive nuts. Okay. Now these nuts go down into the frog and you want to make sure that the holes are facing the right way. Oops, what am I thinking? Put the frog in first <laughs> and slip the captive nuts down into the mating holes. Make sure you've slid the little U bracket over the adjustment screw in the back. Having a little bit of trouble getting this bolt lined up. And again, I guess probably the proper way to do this would be to remove the handle altogether. That way you can actually remove the adjustment wheel too. But let's just say I'm feeling lazy because you get a new tool and you want to get to work with it right away. Um, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way, so I just want to get this packing grease off as fast as I can. And again, if you slip the U bracket in the back over the adjustment screw, the frog will go back in in the same place from whence it came. Set the yoke over the adjustment knob. Okay. So that's back together. Now I want to remove all the grease from the blade and chip breaker and cap iron. Chipbreaker is a really thick piece of steel here. Much thicker than the vintage Stanleys. And I'll say uh, it, it feels thicker than a Lee Nielsen chipbreaker. Now I, I have no idea. I could probably compare it with one of my Lee Nielsen planes, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I don't think it's really important. Let's check the performance and see how it works rather than comparing thickness here. Right now, of course, if it doesn't work well, then that's a different story. Blade's got a good consistent bevel on it. Um, I can certainly see, you know, some grinding scratches, but it looks like it's been honed to a, a decent grit. I'm going to come back with my oil rag here and just wipe down the blade. Kind of put a nice thin coat of oil back onto the blade. <clears throat> Normally when I get a brand new tool, I would of course go and hone the iron, but you can't tell me I'm the only one who hasn't gotten a shiny new Lee Nielsen or Lee Valley tool in the mail and immediately decided to see how it worked. I'm certainly not the only one who's done that. And that's really what I want to emulate here is truly how does it work out of the box. 
Well, I can tell you the blade is sharp enough that I just touched the edge of my gloves and you can see I've got a hole in my glove now. Line that chip breaker up and they are machined perfectly so that it perfectly lines up there. Um, I've set it about a sixteenth from the end of the blade. Now let's clean the cap iron. Another thing I would do with a brand new plane after this cleaning is I would give everything a nice coat of wax. Um, but again, for time purposes, we're not going to do that right now. My chip breaker is not lined up. Okay. You want it tight enough that it holds everything firm, but you want to still be able to adjust the plane. Got a pretty tight mouth here. I'm just using the lateral adjuster to get an even amount of blade showing just by eye. Now I'm going to Back the blade off so that nothing's projecting. Let's start with just a piece of pine and see how we do. Okay. Advance it forward till we start to get a shaving. All right. I need to adjust a little adjuster a little bit. Until I'm getting shaving out of across the full width. Seems to be working all right. Gonna just wax the sole a little. This board is not flat, so I'll see if I can't flatten it out a little bit here. I've pulled the board or the blade back in and I just want to advance until I start getting a shaving. hear that it's grabbing, but I'm not getting much at this point. All right, let's see. That's a pretty thin shaving. There we go. Nice, thin. It's pretty nice. 
shaving I'm getting. There we go. All right, you can see getting a really nice shaving, um, especially on a board that's not particularly flat. And we're talking about, you know, really soft pine here. So let's switch over to a piece of white oak and see how it does right out of the gates. On a harder wood. All right, I'm getting a lot more dust here. And that's kind of to be expected. It's, it's leaving a nice surface, but it's really not pulling much in the way of a shaving. And that's a matter of this blade needs to be honed. So let's pull the blade in. And this sole looks really flat. I mean, I'm not getting any daylight here at all. Not that it's massively important, but I am curious to see if we're square on the edges and that looks looks really good so you know this is kind of what I expected I mean I wasn't expecting to get gossamer thin shavings right off the bat because I don't have you know a properly honed blade but you can see I mean I I didn't edit anything out here you just saw me in all the tedium of cleaning the the packing grease off of this um, no work was done to the blade at all and I'm getting pretty good shavings on a soft wood um, and some somewhat shavings on a hardwood like white oak. Now, I could probably bump the blade out a little bit more and get a better shaving on white oak, but that's not really the point. I mean, yeah. See, I can really deep in the cut and get more shavings out of it. But that's not really what you want to do. And especially with a number three like this, this is going to be more of a finesse plane. So, I, you know, preliminarily, I will say a thumbs up. Uh, I mean, I need to go and hone the blade and get it nice and ready to work before I can truly uh, give a verdict on this. I really want to see how thin of a shaving I can really take with it. Um, the weight feels good. Uh, these smaller planes can take a little getting used to if you've never worked with one this small. Um, the handle um, definitely feels smaller, um, a little bit tighter on my big hands as compared to what the jack plane felt like. So I end up kind of tucking my fingers off to the side. I'm definitely pointing my index finger so I can adjust here. Um, it might take a little bit of getting used to. I might end up using my middle finger for that. But <clears throat> for the most part, it seems like a pretty decent plane. Um, and especially for, uh, for the cash. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to be using this a lot more. I'm going to get the blade all honed up, and I'll be sure to show you, you know, my, my reactions after kind of putting it through its paces on my next project or so. So there we go, the uh, Wood River number three uh, from Woodcraft. Hey, guys, just a real quick postscript here. Um, again, this is the Wood River number three. This is a vintage Stanley number three, and just you know, laying them side by side, uh, the size is, is identical. Um, obviously this is a number three, whereas this is modeled after the 603. So you're gonna see differences in the frog attachment and such. But the first thing that springs to mind is the handle uh, on the Stanley. The handle is definitely a little bit bigger. Um, it doesn't have such an aggressive angle. This, this blade kind of curves back and then tweaks back like that. 
Um, it does remind me a little bit of the Veritas handle, but it is canted forward a little bit more. So it's one thing um, I obviously need to work with it a lot more, but I'm feeling like I don't know quite what to do with my pinky when I'm in here. There's not quite enough room for a three-fingered um, three-fingered grip here. Whereas on the Stanley, I have a lot more room. I can still point my index finger and adjust nicely, but there's it's not so much length. It's just how they've they've canted the handle a little bit. Um, in action, it's interesting because the handle is is kinked forward, but it feels like it feels like it's more upright uh, in the action of it. So I, I can't say that I have an opinion on it yet because I haven't worked with it enough. But you know, I'm certainly more used to this handle. This feels more natural to me. So um, stay tuned. We'll see how this uh, this plays out over time. The knob feels about the same. The knob's a little bit bigger on this one, but again, the the tote still feels a little unnatural to me. I'd be curious to see how well that plays out um, as I work with it over time. Just thought I'd, I'd share that real quick as I pulled out my number three just to compare.